Hello everyone. Um, I noticed that there was some trouble yesterday with um, this worksheet about waves and wavelengths, amplitudes, sound waves. So I'm going to review it with you and then I'm going to give you another chance to go ahead and work on this worksheet. Um, so let's get started. First off, energy travels in waves. So um, two of the most common that we have on Earth, we have light. Light will travel in waves and we have sound. Sound will travel in waves. Uh, light is picked up by your eyes. Sound is picked up by your ears. So today we're taking a look at waves or sound waves. Um, now let's take a look at our waves. Waves will always go up and down, up and down. Uh, the top of the wave is called the crest. The bottom of the wave is called the trough. Okay, so um, we have our crest and our trough. Now, wavelength is when you measure the length from one crest to the next crest. One crest to the next crest. So um, that's basically your wavelength. Now, we also want to measure how tall our waves are. So we call that amplitude. Amplitude is when we measure from the crest to the middle of a wave. You do not measure from the crest to the trough. You measure from the crest to the middle. That <coughs> is amplitude. And that is height, or the height of a wave. Okay, that affects sound waves. Now, um, the amplitude of a sound wave affects how quiet a sound is or how loud a sound is. If you have a sound wave with a low amplitude, it's a quieter sound wave. It makes a quiet sound. If you have a sound wave with a large amplitude, you have a louder sound. Okay, now when it comes to our pitch, we have low pitch and we have high pitch. Okay, low pitch is when you have a sound wave that is very spread out. It has a very long wavelength. We see our crest here. It comes down, we'll assume our trough is about here, but um, that's not our wavelength. The wave's gonna come back up. And we're gonna have a crest about here, so our wavelength's actually gonna be from here all the way to here. So quite a long wavelength, and that's why this creates a lower pitch. Now, if we take a look at a high pitch sound wave, we have a crest here and a crest here. See how the length between crests are much shorter? That makes a high pitch sound. Okay, now, um, usually the sound waves are gonna be consistent if something is staying still. If you look at this radio, it's staying still. Um, its wavelengths are equal if you look at each sound wave line, and um, they're equal on this side, they don't change, they're consistent. Uh, but if you have a moving object that's forming sound, well, the moving object is gonna cause the wavelengths in the front of it to get smaller and the wavelengths in back of it to get longer. Now, this changes the sound of the object. For example, if you have an ambulance that's speeding to the hospital, um, it produces a sound wave, and then it moves forward and produces another sound wave, moves forward, produces another sound wave. Now, as the sound wave is spreading out, uh, the ambulance is continuously producing another wave. So, what ends up happening is the crests in front of the ambulance get closer together, and you end up with a siren that has a high frequency. Um, and the crest in back of the ambulance, well, they get longer, so you end up with a siren with a low frequency. Uh, this comes in handy. Let's say you're in a car and you're in front of the ambulance, but you don't see it. If you hear a high-pitched siren, you um, will have a clue that the ambulance is coming towards you. If you hear a low-pitched siren, that means you're in back of the ambulance and the ambulance is driving away from you. So um, this is a basic run through of sound waves. Go ahead and try this updated worksheet. Um, give it another shot and I hope everyone understands
understands a little better this time.